next on It's Your Season. When I bring you through this pandemic, when I bring you through all the things you had to go through in your life, do you not know life been pressing you down? Tell somebody, I've been pressed. I've been pushed on every side. There have been times that I didn't think I was going to make it. There are going to be times when I looked at my life and said, what is all this for? I don't even know what I'm here for. But God said, I was pressing you and I was molding you to put you in the oven of life that after you shall come forth, you shall come forth as pure gold. Listen, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Keith Felton, Senior Pastor of Trinity Christian Center. I am so delighted to be bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Even in the midst of this pandemic, we've been preaching that which becomes a sound doctrine, not just locally, but around the nation, reaching millions by web television. And we're so delighted to be reaching you in your living room. Listen, this message I know is going to change your life. Listen, change the course of where you see things as God reveals himself through this message. Watch this but the lord looketh on the heart you may be seated in the presence of the lord amen i want to teach briefly it's not going to be long amen however the holy spirit have me to say but it's going to be taught amen amen from the subject image means nothing look at somebody say image means nothing image means absolutely nothing and I believe that sometimes in this life you have to go through some things to appreciate the full gamut of that expression. Image means nothing. But when, you, when you're growing up, image means so much because you're governed by how you look, what you wear, what you drive, who your parents are, where you live. Image is prevailing in our, in our society because it governs how people interact with you. But here in the 16th chapter of 1 Samuel, you will see that how God looks at us is totally different than what man sees of us. That God looks at the inner man and not the outer man. See, when you're so wrapped up in society, you so care about what they say. I got to do this this way. I got to do that that way. And most of the time, we govern our outer life to get approval from people that has, has nothing to do with our life. You'd be surprised how many people that you want approval from that don't even pay your bills, that they don't even know how you got your hair done or your nails did or where you got your suit from. But inadvertently, we live our lives to the point that we want people to like us. It, it, you get to a certain age in your life when you get to the point that you don't really care who likes you. You live your life according to how God has predestined you and pulled you through hell and high water. You cannot go through anything in this life and then surrender your life and your will to mankind because man will change on you. I want to teach this morning from the subject again. Image means nothing because we're living in a society that image has become the new God. Not saying that it has never gotten any attention, but I want to bring some attention to it so our young people and, and those who are in age or remaining can understand that what you have gone through in this life requires you to live the best life through Christ Jesus you can. That means that you don't owe anybody anything but to love them, but to respect them, but to honor them. But all glory goes to God. Is anybody in the building? You not realize that, listen, when you, when you look at your hands, and in fact, if you don't mind, let's do a little example. Hold your hand up in front of your face right now. Hold it up in front of your face. If you don't see any holes in it, you don't have any glory. Because only one man has holes in his hand, and that's the man Jesus Christ. And, and we should be worshiping him and honoring him. If you see a person beside you that does not have holes in their hands, don't give them too much more attention than what they deserve to have because people inadvertently wants to be worshipped. They want to be adored. They want things to come out of you and say, oh, you look so good. Even if they don't say you look good, you know you look good in your own eyes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Even if they say that, sh that skirt is not fitting you or that suit is too tight, oh, don't worry about what people say because their image of how you look has nothing to do with what God has put inside of you. My first point is this. Men and women who have survived horrific heartbreak and horrific setbacks in life, you have a right to deserve a right to worship God in the way that God has called you to worship him. You cannot go through hell and high water and still live your life for other people's approval. <clears throat> Am I making sense to anyone? God told Samuel the prophet, they don't look at the son that is tall and he's this and that and the other. I have refused him. That means that God said they can look the part, but I don't still don't want them. And you can look like you got it going, but God said, I'm still not approved with your life. And sometimes we put so much emphasis on the outer appearance until our inner man goes down. Am I making sense to anyone? Because I'm going to slow down just a little bit. That's why you can look good on the outside and be horrible on the inside. That's why most people that suffer through depression are people that look good on the outside, but they're not doing good on the inside. 
And God said the inward man goes lacking while the outward man gets perfected. Oh, y'all got to get that right there. The inward man, listen, goes lacking while the outward man gets perfected. And we perfect things on the outside to get approval. And God said, you don't have to get approval because people, it's too, you give people too much power when you tell them, well, how you like this on me? Child, I don't like that. I think that's ugly. If they don't like it or not, you have still got to be who God called you to be. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because the image of what people think of you is not what God don't pull you through. We always say, I don't look like what I've been through. Well, you're not living like you done come out. Am I, am I making sense? If you live like you don't come out, I'm talking to people that don't went through some stuff that you thought you were going to lose every aspect of your life. I'm talking to women and men that done been to the hospital and was on the verge of getting a report that was about to change your life. Uh, I'm talking to people that done survived car wrecks and, and been through and by themselves and you managed to come out by the grace and mercy of God and you don't live your life like you used to live it. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? This is the point of the service that I love because it's in the point that God said, if you like me, you like me. And if you don't, you don't. Look at somebody say, if you like me, you like me. If you like me, you like what I come through. If you think I'm too loud, hey, that's just who I am. If you think that I'm too this or too that, everybody has a, listen, is a representative of what he or she done come out of. So if they live their life on a whole nother level, they have gotten past what people think about them. Y'all got to get this. I talk to my older son all the time. I say, son, you know, at the end of the day, I can only guide you, but you got to live your life. You got to live your life. And you're going to understand that the decisions that you make cannot be based upon what everybody else is doing. It has to be based upon what God has put in your life to do. At least you don't be going to school to please daddy because daddy really don't care. Why? Because daddy doesn't live most of his life and you got to live the rest of your life. If you make mistakes that I think that you shouldn't make, that is your life. And I'm still going to love you regardless. He said, what are you saying, Bishop? I'm teaching him to understand the power of being who he really is. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Some of us didn't get that until we got grown. But right now, if we can put in our kids and our nephews and our nieces that be comfortable what God has put you in. Uh, no, you didn't grow up with a father or mother, this or that or the other. But be comfortable that God has brought you through this far and you're able to do what he's called you to do. And image should not mean anything after you done live through stuff that most people die through. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Most of the time we don't appreciate ourselves because we have surrounded ourselves by years by struggle and negative thinking. And if you're shaped by struggle and negative thinking, it affects your outer appearance. You, you don't know how to love yourself because you, you, you grow up surviving, chopping through weeds and trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents and trying to get this done and that done. And you're so used to surviving until no one has ever taught you how to live. So you learn the greatest miracles of your life by going through the greatest mistakes in your life. And sometimes mistakes are mistakes, but a mistake is worth making if you learn from it. Some of us were taught by mistakes. I wasn't taught by some great sage of the age about how ministry, ups and downs of ministry. I was taught through the mistakes that I made in ministry. I was taught how I trusted the wrong people. Am I making sense to anybody? I was taught how I was trusted the wrong people. I taught how I bent over backwards and only got cut in half, and it taught me something. I'm not bitter, it made me better but it shaped the way I live my life situations come to shape your life so that you can get a proper image of who you are in Jesus Christ and we begin to look at the text and see that God said I don't look at the outside like man do God said I don't look at the nice houses and the cars I don't look at nails and perms and suits and gator shoes. I look at nothing about that. I don't look at if you went to college or you didn't go to college. I don't look at you if you've got a PhD or you have no degree. God said, I don't look at that. Your measure of success with God is not the internal badges that we put on our lives. That I went to college, that I'm smart. The devil is a lie. You can go to college and still be just as dumb as a Maytag free refrigerator and not be able to hold anything. It doesn't matter when God raises you up. It doesn't matter what people think. We spent most of our life trying to build our lives so people can love us. When God said, I love you just the way you are. Mistakes and all, slip ups and all. And God said, this is the image that you need to fall in love with. You getting up in the morning and me getting up in the morning cannot make God love me any more, any less. Tell somebody say, he loves me. And that is something to brace and put your arms around because when he say, I love you, he does not love what you put on you. He loves what's inside of you. 
Because imagery, because imagery, I can look like I'm a success. Then you know anybody could dress up. Can I get a witness? Just suppose, can we go in our minds? I suppose I was a creep. <laughs> you know, I'm just messing now. Mr. President, suppose I was a creep, but I dressed up real nice. Don't that make me a well-dressed creep? I mean, it doesn't change the creep that's inside of me. I just look good being a creep. I'm very dressed, well manicured, creep. And no matter how much I cover it up, it still does not deny the fact that I am who I am. That my exterior can change, but my interior can still be polluted. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's why most people get in relationships and they don't know that. Oh, he's so nice or she's so nice, but they're covering the external, what they're lacking on the internal. And sometimes life has a way of revealing who you are. God said, I look at the heart. I don't look at the outer appearance. Anything can dress up. Anything can look nice. But God said, if you don't look the part, I still love you as you are the part because I look at your heart. Y'all got to get something out of this. That, that way, you, when you leave the sanctuary, you can, re, listen, you can refocus on your real life, not what you think people want to see. And that's powerful within that. Because young people, you will spend most of your life, and some older will spend most of your life trying to convince people that you are successful when you're already successful. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This society, I tell first lady all the time, society will tear you up and tear you down before it, you conform to it to, so you can be accepted. Oh, I know y'all didn't come to get some kind of psychological meeting, but I'm going to just break it down so you can get it. Do you not know 90% of commercials for women, all the women say hallelujah, it has to tear you down before you can find power to build yourself up. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe she just pretty. Maybe she's just beautiful and you trying to tell her she's not beautiful to use your product and now she can't get your product and now she feels like I got to have some Maybelline. The devil is a liar. It is what you have already come through that makes you beautiful. It is no makeup. It's no suit. God said it's the image of what people want to paint over your life to make you feel bad about what you're going through in life. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We've never seen so many weight loss pills lose this much weight, this, this much weight. And I say, if you want to lose weight, just fast, baby. Just go on a 40-day fast, and you don't have to tell nobody that you ugly. And, you, and somebody said, well, if you ugly, I don't like the way you're too big, you're too this, you're too that. Stop allowing people to mar the image what God has created. Nobody knows what you had to go through. Nobody knows what you had to endure. Nobody knows the tears that you cry. And you this way because life happened. But God said, don't let life try to tell you how you supposed to look. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I want to talk a little bit more about exterior because we're late in this life that people are more bound on their exterior. Somebody say exterior. We, our young people are going to colleges for the wrong reason. They're not looking deep inside of them for what they want to do. They're doing something that was in their mind to do. And then you make most mistakes by trying to be something that you're not. When God said you're not working on your interior, baby, you're so focused on your exterior. See, success to God is not what success is to people. People like stuff. They like things that are shiny. We like fish. We like shiny things. We like things that catches our attention. But this, you could have all these things that catch your attention and still not be happy. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Do you not know there are, most, there are more millionaires that kill themselves than people that don't have anything? Are y'all hearing? What, listen, you got to go. Look, we got to go a little bit deeper. Do you not know that during the pandemic there were so many men and women who of affluence killed themselves? But when you go downtown in Charlotte and see all the tents that men or women are sleeping on the roadside, uh, they're sleeping by the homeless shelter, and they have not killed themselves. Uh, they have not taken a gun and blown their brains out. They have not put it. Why? Because it's something about the power of God that say yes I don't look like I want to look and yes I don't feel like I'm at the right place but I thank God that I'm still here and no money can make any difference and no people can make any difference it takes a lot of courage to get up every day and set up a tent when it's 30 degrees you don't have to worry about oh my goodness oh y'all hearing what I'm saying 
I believe that after this pandemic is over with, I believe that God is going to usher in a different side of saints. I believe that women and men are going to come forth and say, if you like me this way, you like me. If you don't, you don't. Because I done been through pandemic hell and high water. I done been through things that it's not even worth mentioning about. And I got a right to live like God has called me to live. Uh, if I'm going to drive it, I'm going to drive it. If I'm going to live it, I'm going to live in it. I'm going to say this is the day that the Lord has made and let me rejoice. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Out of appearance has become the God of the world. You, Everybody's studying to look good. You can look good and not feel good. The old folks, he said, I, I wish I look as good as I feel. I feel as good as I look. That means that they look good, but they didn't feel good. And God began to share with me because we put so much stock on the outer man. I'm going to bring it home now. While the inner man, which is what God looks at, suffers. Now, if you're saved and you feel with the spirit of God, God has pulled you in to do spiritual warfare. And spiritual warfare does not require you to look cute. It doesn't care if you come in with shorts or high heel boots. It doesn't matter if you come in here like a cowboy. But as long as you got something down in your spirit, it doesn't matter if you had the thumb or caught catch the train. It doesn't matter if you got $200 million or $2 in the bank. When you're built for spiritual warfare, it doesn't matter how you look. Because when you get home by yourself, tell somebody, say, you're going to get ready to be by yourself. When you're by yourself, when you want your job and trying to figure out how I'm going to pay these bills, uh, it is your relationship with God that's going to push you to the next level. And it's not your heels. It's not your, your hair. It's not your suit. God said, it's the inner man. It's the inner man. God said, it's the inner man. It is the man with inside the man or woman. It is your spiritual maturity. It is you praying over your house when everybody else in the house is asleep. That's what God is looking at. It's you balancing a budget when your baby's in their sleep or your son's in their sleep or your wife or husband in their sleep and you balancing the budget in the supernatural so it can balance out in the natural. God said, I don't need you to look cute right now. The enemy is not looking cute trying to destroy your life while you're trying to look cute for people that don't envy your life. And God said, now you got to look from within and begin to battle for things from without. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Oh, my back, I got to slow down a little bit. Because God had been dealing with me saying, if you put more emphasis on your inner man, you wouldn't be so care about what they think about your exterior man. Did y'all get that right there? We're so worried about what people think until we fail to see what God is doing. I'm supposed to be married by now. No, you're not. I'm supposed to have got my degree. And no, you're not. Because if it was, it would have already been come to pass. So stop trying to build your life to get people to approve of you and live your life to what God has given you. Because most people are waking up with cancer diagnoses. Most people are hooked up to respirators and monitors. What do they care what people think? They just want to get healed in their body. Oh, I'm about to drop off right now. God say, do you remember when you were sick in your body? Do you think that do you remember when you thought you weren't going to get well? And now that you're back on your feet? Now that you're back on your feet? You cannot live your life like you used to live it. There has to be a certain essence about your life that you say, you know what? I'm good with this. God created me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. I can't be what they want me to be. I'm learning to be what you call me to be. And it may not be what they want to be, but I thank God that I'm not what I used to be. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? That my, my approval is not to make everybody happy. Maybe I'm just preaching to me right now. Touch somebody and say, I'm not in the happy business. I'm not, my job is not to put a smile on your face. Uh, my job is not to get your approval. My job is to say, this is the day that the Lord has made, and i got to be glad in it because he made it and not you. Uh, that if you don't like me, I'm still going to pray for him. If you don't give him. If you don't give him a high five, I'm still going to praise him because you didn't make the day. Oh, my goodness. Y'all got to get that right there. There is a certain anointing over our lives that must be change most people say oh I had a rough childhood Did I? forget about that that's old things have passed away are y'all hearing what I'm saying old things you can't you have to forget about that because that would affect your image of who you are today you have to let some things go 
You have to allow God to create your own life instead of you pouting about what happened in life. At least you spend too much time on the past and not work on the present. Tell somebody, say, you've already out of it. You've been crippled by your mistakes for so long until you don't know how to live the life that God has given you right now. And the only thing you can rehearse is what happened and what should have been. If I would have did this, maybe this would have happened. I wish I could have did that and this would have. God said you cannot rehearse what happened. you got to go into what's happening right now. God never moved in mistakes. He made miracles out of mistakes. He does not glory in your past. Only we do that because we think that we're not where we're supposed to be. But God said you're right where you need to be. But you got to embrace who you are. You got to embrace what I've done. You come through some hell and you come through some high water. You had to learn how to do things again. This is your time. This is your life. This is your moment. This is what God has done. And be glad in it. Tell somebody say I'm glad. I can't see me living my life like I used to live it before the pandemic. I cannot see me interacting with people the same way post-pandemic. I, I, I just understand this, that people are going to come to me one way, the old way, but they're going to get the new way, apostle. And they're not going to know how to receive it. Oh, Bishop done change. Bishop acting like something wrong with him. Bishop is just fine. Bishop understand can't nobody go through what I've been through and still come out the same way. Oh my goodness, is anybody in the building? Listen, hold the music. Did you not know we got some cooks in here? We got chefs. Did you not know the dough that you need on the board is not the bread that comes out in the oven? Did they get that right there? Did you not know in order for a biscuit to be a biscuit or a loaf of bread to be a loaf of bread, it has to be kneaded and pushed in dough. And when the dough is put in the pan molded, the heat has to make it rise. Do you actually believe the bishop, the dough that went in before the pandemic, is not going to be the bread that comes after the pandemic? Because God said, I know how to press down, shaking you together, make you run over, that you can't be the same. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You can't get you can't get a biscuit. You can't get any bread without that dough being kneaded and put it in a pan. And God said, listen, when I bring you through this pandemic, when I bring you through all the things you had to go through in your life, do you not know life been pressing you down? Tell somebody, I've been pressed. I've been pushed on every side. There have been times that I didn't think I was going to make it. There won't be times when I looked at my life and said, what is all this for? I don't even know what I'm here for. But God said, I was pressing you and I was molding you to put you in the oven of life that after you shall come forth, you shall come forth as pure gold. Thank God for the pressing. Thank God for the pushing. Thank God for the kneading. And if you think that I'm going to the oven and come out still dough, the, the oven wasn't on. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The oven was not on. He said, well, Bishop, where you going with this? Everybody has an oven called life. No matter how much I love my kids and my wife, they got their own life. And our decisions that we make, y'all be seated, I'm going to get out of your way. The decisions that we make determines the heat of the oven. Someone said, I'm in a heated situation right now. I got a lot going on. Well, you did it. <laughs> I know it's Christmas. I, I, I don't want to be so blatant, but it's the truth. Everything that you're dealing with is, is, is directly or uninvertedly. Uninvertedly means that you're dealing with things that you didn't have anything to do with it, but it somehow kind of way affects your life. So you have to step in just a little bit, but you got to step out. But when you step in, you can't complain because you made that decision. Ooh. Nobody likes that, don't they? Well, I just want to help for a little while. You can't help for a little while. You better get in and get out. But if you complain about what you helped about, then you're crippled by something choice that you made. And then there's the things that you can't do nothing about. It's called your life. It's called your life has a certain measure of struggle over it. We can pray and say, Lord, take this cup away from me. He said, no, baby, I'm not going to take this cup away from you because if I take this cup away from you, you wouldn't even pray to me like you're doing. I got to have this cup of struggle over your life. I got to have the cup of, the, of determination over your life. If I took it away from you, it would affect the overall image of what I'm trying to do because sometimes struggle will make you successful. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Sometimes God has to put a level of, of struggle over your life to make you want to do better. Can I, can I make one more point? First lady, now we look at this show called Beautiful Homes. Y'all seen it before? They take you through uh, the opulent, elegant household. And I say, Lord, look how people living. 
I say, God, I, w- I would like to live in something like that. God said, you could have lived in that years ago. <laughs> you could have done that years ago. You could have walked in that years ago. But you determine the climate of your life by what you think people would expect. And you say, well, why is that? Because sometimes in ministry, let me show you this because I can tell you out of almost 30 years of preaching, sometimes in ministry we'd be like, I don't want to have too much because the people think I'm spending the money. Amen. I thought first lady would come give me a high five. I'm like, I high five you, baby. Good God Almighty. Lord, yeah. Sometimes you can have things in your life and you say, no, I'm not going to do that because then they're going to think I got money. Let them think what, they, what you got. Tell somebody say, this is what God blessed me with. That, that's a certain image that we got to kill in the body of Christ, dumbing ourselves down so people can be comfortable while you going through hell and high water not being who God called you to be. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So I begin to say, God, look at all the things that I could have had. And God said, it's not too late. Because coming into the realization is just as powerful as manifestation. Because you cannot manifest until you come into the realization that I can do this. I, I can leap over walls. I, I can run through truth. God said the realization. Somebody say realize. Once you realize that where you're living and what you're doing, you can go higher than the half hadn't been told. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Oh, my goodness. Nobody want to hear this kind of teaching and preaching. Because exterior, God said, while we build exterior, God said, look at the interior part. I can look successful, but have no power. The Bible says forms of godliness with no power. That the very thing that I need from God is not another car. And if you're watching by web television, it's the truth. We're praying in the sanctuary for external assets and not praying for internal power. My, how the time flies, but we're not out of word. I'm so excited to have brought to you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. In the midst of this pandemic, the gospel is being preached, not just locally, but around the world. And you say to yourself, how can I get more preaching like this, more material? Stay tuned. The next voice you hear will guide you in how to acquire this message and many others for your video or just library and public. Listen until next Saturday on this station. It's your season. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. We are so honored to have shared this time with you. If this message has truly blessed you and you desire a copy as well as other ministry materials, please stay tuned. When you go downtown in Charlotte and see all the kids that men or women are sleeping on the wayside, uh, they're sleeping by the homeless shelter, and they have not killed themselves. For your love gift of any size, you will receive this message in its entirety on CD. They have not taken a gun and blown their brains out. They have not put it. Why? Because it's something about the power of God. They say, yes, I don't look like I want to look. And yes, I don't. For your love gift of $25, we will send you this dynamic message on CD and DVD. I feel like I'm at the right place, but I thank God that I'm still here. And no money can make any difference. And no people can make any difference. It takes a lot of courage to get up every day and set up a tent when it's 30 degrees. You don't have to worry about... And when your love gift is $50, we will send you this message on CD, DVD, and this inspiring book by Bishop Felton. We want to thank you for your ongoing support and prayers as Bishop Felton takes the gospel around the world. Until next time, it's your season.